Hi. Okay, so here's a short video explaining the differences between asthma and congestive heart failure. Believe it or not, I am not here alone. I have second period with us. Say hello, second period. Hello. That was the weakest I've ever heard. Let's hear it again. Hello, second period. Hello. Okay, they're really here. That's not that's not background noise that I got off of iTunes. Okay, so listen, we're going to keep this short. As you can see behind me on the projector and on your own screen right here somewhere, there's a picture of an asthma lung. It's actually not the entire lung. It's just a part of the bronchial tubes. I wanted you guys to see a behind-the-scenes look at what happens during an asthma attack. Does anybody here have asthma? There's like 10 people raising their hand right now. Do you believe me? No. Now look, what happens during an asthma attack? Well, somebody can't breathe, right? Is your timer going, by the way? Yeah. Okay, good. Just let me know when we're getting close to five minutes or whatever. Ten minutes. Okay, so basically, long story short, during an asthma attack, your bronchial tubes start swelling and they get mucus build up inside. That's gross, mucus, right? Every time, when I hear the word mucus, it automatically grosses me out. But anyway, this is what happens. Mucus goes inside the bronchial tubes. Your bronchial tubes swell up and you can't breathe. And then you start panicking. You think you're going to die. And you could die if you don't get help. But we're not going to let that happen because we're here to help people, right, you guys? Okay, so we need to figure out how to get that swelling down, how to get that mucus out of there. Because, check it out, see those... See these things right here, the alveoli? We need air to get to the alveoli. Why? Because that's where the magic happens. What do I mean when I say magic? What kind of magic happens in the alveoli? Anybody? Nobody's listening anymore. Blood gets oxygenated. Very good. We want your blood to get oxygenated. Why? Because that's how you get oxygen to your brain. All right. You don't, you don't care, but look, look it, when you stop getting oxygen to your brain, you're gonna, that's when you're going to start panicking, right? All right, so how do we fix it? Anyone know? Inhaler, good. Nebulizer, very good. Check it out. Albuterol, here you go, right here. Check this out. Okay, so for today, we're going to, I'm going to set up a nebulizer and how to administer albuterol. So make sure... Your contents are still sterile. Make sure the expiration date is still good. Same way it goes with your nebulizer. Now I'm going to be using a pediatric nebulizer. That's all I have right now. So you've got three pieces here. You have your oxygen tubing. You have your face mask with a little piece at the bottom. And you have the um, unit in which all the albuterol actually goes into and then plugs into the face mask. So you can go ahead and strap it all together if you want. Just like that. Albuterol comes in a small package just like this. Tear it open. It'll come in a small clear unit like this also. What we want to do is unscrew the base here, trying to maintain some level of sterility. Pop the cap off of this albuterol. Dump the entire contents if your unit calls for it. Screw it back in. As such, then what we're going to do is plug it into our oxygen line or our oxygen tank. And ours calls for six liters a minute. Oh my gosh. And you'll see it missing like that. And that's what you want. And allow the patient to put it on its face. Uh, if it doesn't like it, you can hold it back a little bit. You can get the buttons to work now. Yeah. That's literally it. 
Does anybody know how to? Okay, there we go. Okay, look, I'm going to get to the point because we're running out of time. I got a little distracted with the stickers there. But anyways, as you can see, he set up an albuterol treatment. The person will breathe that in. All the swelling will go down and all this mucus will go away and they'll start feeling better and they'll live happily ever after the end, right? But let's say that it's not asthma, it's congestive heart failure. That's a totally different thing. Here's a picture of someone with congestive heart failure. They don't have wheezing like an asthma patient. They have bubbling sounds in their lungs called crackles. Why? Because they have fluid building up in their lungs and because their heart is not pumping efficiently, usually because of a heart attack or some kind of heart damage. And instead of the fluids going all around the body like they're supposed to, they're going in the wrong places, like in your lungs and in your feet, extremities, that's called pedal edema. And that's what you see here, swelling, and also fluid in the lungs, tiredness, short, shortness of breath, coughing, all that kind of stuff. All right, let's move on to question and answer real quick before we wrap it up. How are we doing on time? Wait, we have three minutes left? Okay, so let me just ask our studio audience if anyone has any random questions that we'd never thought of before. Okay, let's see here. Oh, I see a hand. Okay, go ahead. Come up, sir. I mean, you don't have to be on the camera, but I can't reach the microphone way over there because I, I didn't want to pay extra for the longer cords. All right, we have a question from the audience. Give them a hand. I, I can't reach that far. You're going to have to come closer. All right, so here's this person who cannot be on camera. Go ahead. Can physical activity cause, cause shortness of breath? Physical activity? You mean like exercise? What is that? Oh, remind me tomorrow. Yeah, we don't want to restart our computer right now. Yes, exercise-induced asthma. Have you guys heard of that before? Yeah. That's the kind of asthma I get when I'm walking to the vending machine because I'm so out of shape. But some of us, when we're exercising, we're working out. Yes, we can get asthma from that. Not so much congestive heart failure, but yeah. Does that answer the question? Okay. Oh, look, we have another question. Someone's raising their hand. That's great. Okay. Hold on. Let me, you guys, I'm going to have to, I'll be right back. Don't leave. Don't leave, person, whoever's watching this. <laughs> I'm getting congestive heart failure. You're trying to reach the microphone to this person. Will your, weight, will your weight or diet cause or affect congestive heart failure? Did you guys hear that? Can weight, well, I almost tripped over the cord. Can being overweight or just your weight in general or diet cause or affect congestive heart failure? Yes. Do you guys remember when I said that congestive heart failure is usually because of some, some kind of heart damage? Well, yeah. do you, when you guys think of burritos, do you think of heart damage? I do. Every time I eat a burrito, I think I should not be eating this right now. It's not good for my heart. But they taste too good. That's the problem, right, you guys? Raise your hand if you like burritos. Literally, everybody is raising their hand. Even the person who's facing the wrong way is raising his hand. Everybody likes burritos, right? <laughs> Cheeseburgers, fries. All... You don't like burritos? Get out of my room, man. All right. And there's one last question, and we're about out of time, right? We have one minute. We have one last question. Go ahead. Let me – hold on. I feel like the Price is Right guy walking around with the microphone. What medications are used to treat congestive heart failure and asthma? Thank you. What medications do we use? Well, for the one that you just saw, the guy that was putting – did you guys notice that guy works at the zoo? That video we just watched, he works at the zoo. I don't know why he's... Anyway, it's weird. That's true. I, yes, I do. All right, so the albuterol is the medication that I use putting in the inhaler. That's usually the main medication we use for that. And then for congestive heart failure, the most common one is a water pill like Lasix. And so what they do is they take that water pill and then they have to get rid of all those fluids. How do you guys think they get rid of those fluids? 
El baño. El baño. They go to the bathroom and they pee for days. And that's how they get rid of fluids. All right. Well, I'd love to sit and chat with you guys, but we hit our 10 minute mark. So if you want to learn more about this, please read your book. Yeah, I don't have one. It's, we have them in the classroom, you guys. Okay. Adios. Goodbye. What's up? Yes, you may use the restroom. Okay. That's a good way to end the video. Talk to you later.